Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to make plasma, the circuit to do it, and what you need to look for. These are the plasma projects I'm going to show you how to build today, and I might throw in a couple extra. But here we go. Let's talk about what kind of plasma and how you want to make it. If I want to make something with a lot of amps in it, I'm going to go ahead and use this power pack here. It's designed to put out more amps. But say I didn't want to do that. I wanted to put out less amps. I'd use one of these. This is just a simple power pack. You probably have one laying around your house. Pick one up at your yard sale, maybe you just want to buy one. This one right here, 12 volts, 4.16 amps. So this one right here is fairly good for the plasma array that you see that spreads out. And I'll show you that. This one right here, is 19 volts 2.37 amps this one is my go-to on most of my projects that I use for the plasma feature that spreads out now if I wanted to create something with a lot of white in it then I go ahead and I use this and actually the voltage turns pink at night so it makes a real cool look so if you want to use heavier amps there's this Lighter amps, there's this. Now I'll show you the difference in the actual voltage, the way it looks, real quick. This is the voltage coming out from a power pack. As you can see, the voltage is real thin. It doesn't have a whole lot of white in it. Perfect for making plasma that sprays out in that cool looking effect. I wouldn't recommend you do this at home unless you wanted to ride the lightning. So you might ask how I set this stuff up. These things are generally pretty simple. If you look at this, and I'll show you a good picture of it, there's a positive and negative on it. All you have to do is line those up with your battery. I put these little ends on here. I'll show you a better picture of that. And it's a simple wrap around your DC coil here. Probably had a little more zap in it. Anyway, right here, the positive and negative. I've had these things where the amps are so high on this side, this little bracket here, it just burns right off. It unsolders itself, and then I had to solder directly to the board itself. So keep that in mind. Now on your negative, it's just the one that sparks the best. I'll show you a picture of that. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool when you do it. It's a little fun adventure just to have, because maybe you just want to go out and spark something. I, I do that. As a matter of fact, I do it a lot. But anyway, I'll show this better for you, but this is the, one of the setups I use. This is uh, one of my voltage coils, so you're basically going to see this one with the, uh, you're going to see it with the battery right here. So that right there is what's going to create your pink plasma. All you need to do is get your uh, ZVS set up here with your flyback. Okay, and all you're going to do is you're going to put, uh, this is an aluminum ring, you can use steel, okay, it wouldn't matter, or copper. And then you're going to take a hole saw and your drill. And all you're going to do is you'll end up centering up the drill. Make sure you tape off the, the light here, okay, so you don't get that in the background because it makes a very bad image. Then you're going to take your wire here. Mine's all kind of funky hooked up to this big old cord that comes across here. And all you're going to do is you got your negative over here. This will be your positive. As you hit the drill, just place that on there as you're holding the drill. Now, pull the drill out before you stop it. Because you'll get a little bit of a shock, depending on how much your ZVS is going, because there's a lot of static going on. Put that right there and make a ring of fire. And uh, I'll show you how it looks. So what I want you to notice right here is you see that the power pack was hooked up earlier. And it puts out a lot of amps. As you see in the plasma here, there's a lot of white. And yes, it does go into pink. But all that white is the amps in the plasma. That's why this one works the way it does. Again, distance. We are probably about an inch, inch and a quarter on this one. Because we're not looking for that big giant plasma effect. We're looking for like amp in plasma effect. This one right here is the one I use to create most voltage projects. The actual flyback in here is a little different than the other one. So I'm getting a much thinner spark 
which is exactly what you're looking for. The thick ones with a lot of white in them have way too many amps. So this is the one I would use the power pack on. Again, I'll show you a better picture of this. As you can see, there's no piece right here. Again, I had to solder it to the back because I overamped it with a different power source than I usually use. But this is the coil that I go to right here. Again, here's the power pack that I use here. And just as a quick understanding, I'll show you this a little better. Oh, anytime you use one of these right here, just remember this right here with the shielding on it of the plastic is your positive. Anything right here with just the metal, it forms around the whole thing. You got to pull it to one side. I solder mine off. That's your negative. One of my favorite things to do with plasma is to connect it with these items here. Now this is just a solid piece of aluminum all the way through. These right here are just saw blades. They were once one blade, pretty big, just like that. Used for cutting tree limbs and stuff. Anyway, what you do is you connect the positive here or the negative, doesn't really matter. They're both positive. So just hook the one you think is positive here, the one you think is negative here. Right about here, you're about an inch and a half off. That's about exactly where you need to be. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but that's where you need to be. And that'll create that nice plasma bridge you see right in between it. Now, you want to get a little more advanced. You take this and this and you set it up in this configuration here. Now, what are you doing? This has to be connected to this one. So these two are connected on the same line. This is connected on the opposite. So if you said these two were negative, this would be the positive wire. Again, distance is important. Now, you may think, well, you're using two, so we're, you need to bring in the distance a little bit. And the answer is no, not at this level. Just right here. This is exactly what you need. So that'll get you this nice plasma look here. One thing to remember is the sound you want to hear. When you hit that sound, you know you're at the correct distance. Maybe you want to do it in saw blades. The key here is metal, no paint. This is a used saw blade, plenty of metal on the ends here. So what do you want to do? Same thing. If you connect it with this right here and straight, you're only going to get the one where the distant distance matches right here. So obviously that's just this. What do you have to do? You have to bend this around the curve to match the saw blade. Now, can you use two saw blades sitting on top of each other? The answer is yes. And all you have to do is you line up the two saw blades here. Again, two, line them up. Again, put this piece over here and it'll give you the same plasma look. Everything's about a big size and a small size, no matter how you do it. One has to have more mass in metal. That's the key here. And no paint. If you use something that has paint, it's not going to give you that same plasma look you're looking for. It'll actually maybe just spark over once or twice if you're lucky, or it might just do nothing. The key is no paint has to be bare metal. That's how you do it. This is what the saw blades look like when you connect it to the rod now. And you can see on here, I bent the rod. And I just want you to look at each one of the little ends of the saw blade here, the little points. They actually make the plasma come right off of it. And that's what you're looking for. A couple of things here. If I just wanted to use a hole saw and a ring, could I do it? Sharp edges, again, metal. Everything depends on distance. As you can see here, the aluminum ring is about an inch and three quarters or so away from the bottom hole saw blade. I didn't show the connections in this one, but obviously the ring is positive and on the bottom, the hole saw blade is negative. From the side, this just looks like a bowl. From the top, it kind of looks like a vortex. 
just to show you, you can use just about anything for one of these projects. This right here is my big speed square. This right here is the same saw blade you saw earlier. Now, I can put this on this side right here and create plasma in between it. Why? Because this has more metal in it than this. And again, sharp edges and no paint. This right here makes this effect right here look cool just like this. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. It was a blast to make. I love making plasma. I love lighting things up in my garage. I hope you learned something today. And thank you very much again. If you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe. Thank you. I wanted to leave a little bonus footage on the end here for you. This is my uh, triangle plasma. Anyway, it looks pretty cool. Sorry for no schematics in this. There's three wires. There's no schematic to draw. I hope you guys understand that. Anyway, thank you for watching.